Good afternoon. I hope you are having a great Monday. I'm Julie Broughton. It is now 1230. This is Take 6. It's when we get to hang out a little bit after our new newscast and talk about what we're working on here in the News 6 newsroom. And it's nice to be able to have these conversations outside of the traditional newscast times because we have a little bit more time to dive into things. Hope you got to get out and enjoy the weather this weekend. Of course, if you've been outside today, you know that pleasant weather is gone. We'll talk more about your forecast and more about Ernesto coming up in just a few minutes. We'll also be checking in with News 6 anchor Justin Warmoth live from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, where the Lake Mary All-Stars are continuing their quest in the Little League World Series. So a lot of cool stuff to get to. But first, we are going to bring in News 6 investigator Eric Sandoval. Tomorrow, of course, is Election Day, and more than 40 Central Florida candidates are running for school board positions. So these are very important positions, certainly for parents to be deciding the who's going to determine the direction of the schools that their kids go to. And Eric, your story this morning or this afternoon takes us to an Orange County pizza shop. Not exactly what I was expecting when I saw that you were talking about school board run elections. You know, we, we decided to take a little <laughs> bit of a twist with, with the storytelling in this. You know, and actually, I think the candidate in this case really, really threw everybody a little curveball with this because they're trying to, you know, find some unconventional ways to, to get to parents, to get to families. And so one school board candidate actually took his, you know, Q&A session to a pizza shop. And it wasn't just sitting in the pizza shop either. He was actually behind the counter. He was, you know, making pizzas for everybody who was showing up. And, and as they were coming up to get their pizzas, they had a little conversation about what do you think is working in your child's school? What do you think isn't? And, you know, it, it made us think, you know, what, what are our viewers? What are our users on ClickOrlando.com, 6 Plus, and, and of course, News 6? What are your questions? What, what do you want from school board? What do you want? the big issues for school board members to tackle. And so we actually asked you, we, we went to clickorlando.com and we said, what are the issues that are most important to you in your child's classroom? And we got, Julie, so many responses. Um, can I read a couple of them? Do we have time? Yeah, we have all the time in the world, Eric. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can show pictures of your pets. You can talk about your story, what, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to do that this time, okay? <laughs> but but let, let me read some okay. of the responses. Uh, pay teachers what they're due. It's criminal what Florida's what Florida pays teachers. That was one of the responses. Teach real history. Teach critical race theory. Get rid of politics in school. Stop banning books. That was just one response there. And then another, let teachers teach and provide a safe environment to do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Julie, you know, we took those and then we said, well, what are the candidates thinking? So we literally, we went through the platforms of all 46 candidates running for school board here mm -hmm. in Central Florida. And we found out what the big issues are. And you know, number one was school safety. That, that That's just a given. You, you know, I know you have a daughter in school, yeah. high school, right? She just started high school. She just Isn't started that high wild? school. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember <laughs> when she was this big. But, right. Um, um, you know, school safety is a mm -hmm. huge issue that school boards continue to tackle. So yeah. um, we have a big investigative piece on this that airs tonight at six. So make sure you tune in then and find out what these school board members mm -hmm. really want to tackle one day before you head to the polls to elect new school board members. Yeah, and so many people, I think, when you talk about elections, they're like, oh, I'm going to skip this round and I'll just vote for the presidential election in November. And these local elections are so important and have such an impact on your day-to-day -day life. Like what happens in your kid's school? And you're talking about 46 candidates across mm -hmm. our nine counties. I mean, these are important races to be participating in. Absolutely, you know, and to your point, I think a lot of people go, oh, it's just a school board race. Why am I going to go to the yeah. polls? Here, here's why, you know, one of the people said, keep politics out of the schools. Well, you know, part of our piece tonight focuses mm -hmm. on um, a group called Moms for Liberty, which was actually birthed here in Central Florida. It is now across the nation. It's actually ebbed into uh, uh, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. But um, for the last few years, we've been reporting how Moms for Liberty has really gained a momentum and has, you know, handpicked some of the candidates to appear in school board races and have actually won. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a group to watch and this is a group that we actually focus on in part of our piece tonight. And Eric, we do have your story that aired this morning. We can go ahead and take a yep. look at that and then that'll give folks an idea of what they can expect because you expand on this tonight at six. So let's go ahead and check out Fantastic. that story. Okay. At this Orange County pizza shop, 
The pies here are being served with a side of politics. It is edible, it's definitely edible. Playa Pizza took the place of a traditional conference room and hosted a question and answer session for a Central Florida school board candidate. The internet's a pretty great source, but in person it's also pretty nice as well. I think sometimes watching things on TV, you, you know, you don't necessarily get to ask what you want to hear, so I think being able to have the opportunity to talk to someone like that in a casual environment, it's very warm and welcoming. I think it allows for open dialogue. So what do the people running for school board want? Well, that depends on the candidate. News 6 actually combed through the platforms of all 46 candidates running for school board in Central Florida's nine counties. 46% said that they wanted to improve school safety. More than a third said fiscal responsibility, keeping the teachers they have, and giving parents a say in what was happening in the classroom were important. At the bottom of the list, banning critical race theory, political indoctrination, and pushing for more choice in which schools kids can attend. Now it's time for you to decide. We put the links to all of the candidates running for local school board races on our website, clickorlando.com. Just look for the investigators. In Orlando, Eric Sandoval, Getting Results, News 6. Um, mentioned that you talked about they said it's it's nice to talk to people in person and then you see people on mm -hmm. TV but you know you get a different feel when you're actually face to face with someone having a conversation so that's so nice that they had that opportunity and it does sometimes give you a different impression or just a different vibe absolutely and you know I, I want to get back to what we were talking about earlier you know people may dismiss tomorrow's election mm -hmm. because it's not a November election or not a presidential primary election these races, I would argue, are much more important at the local level because these are the people who are actually running your day-to-day -day mm -hmm. operations. And school board, this is the next generation of citizens. And you want to make sure that who is running and creating the rules and setting the budget guidelines for what is happening in the classroom is of vital mm -hmm. importance to the next generation. Absolutely, Eric. And we are looking forward to the rest of your story, your new story coming up tonight at 6. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks a lot, Julie. All right, thank you. All right, you want to stick with us? We're going to check in with News 6's Justin Warmoth. Talk more about the Lake Mary All-Stars. They are playing tonight in the Little League World Series. They've already won two games, so hopefully we're going to add a third one to that tonight. We'll also talk more about your forecast coming up in just a few minutes.
All right, welcome back. We are coming up on 1240. Hey, I've got a question for you. Are you a New 6 Insider? You are looking at our Insider page on ClickOrlando.com. We have several contests going on right now, including a contest where you can win two tickets to a Kennedy Space Center event and also to win a family four pack to Disney on ice. We are always running really cool contests on for our insiders. All you have to do is go to clickorlando.com slash insider. It is free to be an insider and it is always free to enter our contest. So you want to make sure you check that out. And we are very excited to talk to New 6 anchor Justin Warmoth. He's been away from us here in Orlando for a little while. We miss him, but it's for a good cause. He is in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, covering the Lake Mary All-Stars in their quest to become Little League World Series champions. Justin, I know the original plan was that you were going to come back yesterday, and now it seems like your trip's gotten yeah. extended, but, but for a good reason. Yeah, I mean, they're winning, Julie. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. We have to stay at this point. The travel to get here is so difficult, and I think the initial plan was, all right, let's get you back on Sunday, and then we'll reassess. But, you know, it's like a two hour, a little bit more than two-hour flight into Allentown, and then from Allentown, it's about a two-and-a-half-hour drive to get to Williamsport. It just didn't make sense, so mm -hmm. we just made the decision, let's just stick with it. Let's just be up here the entire time. As, as long as Lake Mary's up here, we're going to be up here. <laughs> And so I think one thing that's so cool about this is the whole community is so excited about this backing. You know, I don't really know that I've ever watched many baseball games in my life. But Friday night, you know, I was texting you because I was parked in front of the TV with my daughter watching. And it's so exciting. And that game Friday night, what was it like to be there? That excitement. I know you got the home run ball for one of the young men's mothers. So just quite. A that was oh, loud. <laughs> <laughs> that was really <laughs> yes yes I, I think we do we certainly heard a little bit of it. <laughs> all right there we go <laughs> all right so i'll give you the i'll set the scene for you so that's jj feliciano he was obviously the star of wednesday night's game because he was the starting pitcher mm -hmm. struck out 11 guys his mom was in lake mary in central florida had to watch that game on tv so right before <laughs> This game on Friday night, she got to Williamsport literally just a few hours before. So I said, you know, I talked to her before the game. How was that? How was it watching at home? Does it feel nice to be here? He ends up hitting a home run in the sixth inning. My photographer, Daniel Macaluso, texted me, said, left field, left field guy, uh, the security guy has the ball. And I was like, I'm going to go get it. And so I ran down there, got the ball, gave it to mom. Um, it was just fate, I think. You know, she – she just pulled in and <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I love the kids out here. Um, the kids who are just watching baseball. I just wanted, I thought that was such an important uh, piece of history that they can hold on to. And I really wanted to make sure that the family got that baseball. It was the first home run that Lake Mary had hit at the little league world series. And then they slapped their name on the plaque <laughs> And that that matchup now is tonight, and that's against this team from Bernie, Texas. Okay. Um, that's a little bit. It's like northwest of San Antonio. I guess it's more of a San Antonio suburb. So mm -hmm. um, they're a good team. They hit three home. They hit three home runs in their first game. Wow. Uh, they won nine one against their opponent. This is a critical game today. Mm -hmm. And I was at practice this morning. Uh, with the little leaders because yesterday they were away from baseball, although mm -hmm. they watched a lot of baseball because Major League Baseball had a game in Williamsport between the Yankees and the Tigers. So they didn't get to hit the practice field. The coach said they were a little lethargic. He got them going. And this is a big game. Here's a look at the bracket. If Lake Mary wins, it puts them in the driver's seat, right into the semifinals where they only need one more game to make it to the championship. If they lose... They play tomorrow, and then they would have to win tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday to essentially reach the same point if they just win tonight. So it's a okay. really, really big game. And they're not here just to have a good time. Yes, they're having a good time. But Coach says, listen, we're here to win this thing. We've proven that we are the best team here. We're going to continue to fight and continue to try to bring home a championship to Lake Mary. So – this is a big one, 7 o'clock tonight, um, and that's why I'm at the hotel. It was a little rainy, mm -hmm. so we said, let's go to practice. Let's get through it. Then 
Um, let's go back to the field a little bit later today. That's the plan. So okay. I was able to talk to the coach, talk to one of the players, and um, I got their reaction. So we're going to have much more throughout the afternoon leading up to tonight's game. All right, Justin, is it going to be raining tonight at 7? I feel weird being the meteorologist asking you this. I have not looked at their forecast. <laughs> Have you looked at your I, pinpoint I weather app really, for? I, you know, I'm not a meteorologist. I am using the pinpoint weather app up here. Okay. It says that it'll be clearing up and it's not raining anymore. It was just raining probably about, I think we left practice about an hour ago and got back to the hotel. Um, and so I think it's going to be clear for the remainder of the day. And then it's really nice throughout this entire next week. So the goal is to not play tomorrow. Okay. Again, get this win tonight. You play Wednesday and that game's at three o'clock so this is critical this is a big deal and uh, all games are big games but I will argue that tonight is definitely the biggest and I think as they continue to move on to this tournament that next game will be their biggest game so okay. tonight's the biggest game they played so far and we'll see how they come out by the way JJ Feliciano who started the first game and pitched so well against South Dakota he is starting tonight again so I think they have confidence from that standpoint, but this team can hit this, uh, this Bernie team mm -hmm. from Texas, from Southwest, uh, the region from the Southwest region, they can hit a lot of their parents were staying at this hotel that I'm staying at. So I've been, uh, seeing them and we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but bright lights of Lomity, by the way, Julie, 14,000 people were in attendance for the last game. That's incredible. That is so cool. This has been so much fun I mean, to watch and just yeah, and one experience. Next games get like 18,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> so okay. Tonight, you got to expect big crowd. Yeah, I'm. A, we're ready. We're excited. All right, Justin. I, will, I know you're doing lots of work there, so I'll let you get back to work, and we'll see you on News okay. 6 starting at 4 this afternoon. Sounds good. Good to see All you. All right. Good to see you. All right, let's get a check your forecast here. I didn't know what's happening weather-wise in Williamsport, but Justin filled us in on that. I do know what's happening here, so let's get you to your radar scanning out. We are dry as we're sweeping out here at 1246. We are not quite as nice as we saw over the weekend. I hope you got to get out and enjoy the weekend. Man, it really felt nice out there. All on the backside of Ernesto. Ernesto now well off to our north and east, but still sending some rough surf and rip currents our way. As of 11 o'clock, this thing is still a hurricane with winds at 90 miles miles per hour. Now back here at home, we're watching another front to our north. Unfortunately, this is not going to have the same punch as that front that moved through Thursday into Friday. This is actually going to kind of get hung up over our area and keep our rain chances a little bit higher as we head toward the end of the week. Now wind speeds right now, remember we're to the south of a front. That means our winds are coming in out of the southwest at 13 miles per hour right now in Sanford. 15 mile per hour winds from the southwest right now in New Smyrna Beach. Your clouds on rain forecast. Rain chances for today around 30 to 40 percent. We'll see those rain chances going up as we head toward the end of the week. But by five o'clock this afternoon, again, we could see some showers across our northern counties up toward areas like Flagler County. And I think the best chance of rain will be primarily to the east of I-4 down toward areas like Melbourne, Mico, Grant, Valkyria by around eight o'clock. And then we'll see skies becoming partly cloudy as we head through the evening hours and into tomorrow. Right now we are sitting at 90 in Orlando, 92 if you're in Melbourne. It's 87 in Ocala and 90 in Palm Coast, but here's what you need to know. The humidity is back. It feels like 104 in Daytona Beach, feels like 100 in Leesburg, and feels like 102 in the villages. Here's how it looks for your next seven days. Again, our rain chances for today are at 40%. We bump those up to 50% for Tuesday. And then by the end of the week, as that front just kind of gets hung up across Central Florida, we'll keep our chance of rain at 70%. We'll talk more about that and the tropics for you coming up on News 6 starting at 4. If you have any questions or comments for us at Take 6, head to clickorlando.com slash Take 6. Let us know what's on your mind. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you at 4.